Have you ever wanted to move a NavMesh agent without click to move, but instead using a keyboard? Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today's part 34 of the AI series, where we're gonna take a look at how to do exactly that, moving on a NavMesh using the keyboard instead of clicking to move. This enables some cool benefits, like we don't need to have any physics colliders in our scene whatsoever to have the player move around. And we don't need to have any rigid bodies attached to any components, but there are some limitations, such as we could not have obstacle avoidance working out of the box because the player is moving with the keyboard and mouse, and the avoidance works when the path is set of the agent. Since we're not using a path, we can't get that obstacle avoidance out of the box. One other limitation is that nav mesh links or off mesh links do not work using the method that we're gonna to use today. I tried to make it work and I had to do a bunch of work around so I wouldn't call it a clean solution to make it work. That's why it's not in this video. If you know how to make it work very easily using this method, go ahead and leave a comment down below so that way everyone can learn from your experience. That'd be really helpful. What you can expect from this video is having a nav mesh agent that moves with the keyboard input using a new input system. If you wanna use the old input system, what you can do is check out the GitHub repo, link in the description. That has both the new and the old input systems available. We're only gonna really look at the new input system in this video. Once we get the input from the user, what we're gonna do is smoothly rotate and accelerate the agent up to their desired agent movement speed that's controlled on a nav mesh agent and they'll be looking in the direction that they're moving, just like you would see them do if you did agent.setDestination. The good thing is that the priority of the agents still does work. So an agent that has a lower priority than another agent will simply push agents out of the way. If an agent has the same priority as another agent, they'll kind of run into each other. An agent with a higher priority than a different agent will not be able to push that agent at all. It'll act as an obstacle for that agent. So while the obstacle avoidance won't work out of the box, the priority of the agents is still considered whenever moving this agent using the keyboard. I've got to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. Every single one of you helps this channel reach more people, which means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you want to become a supporter, you can go to patreon.com slash Academy, get your name up here on the screen, on the GitHub repos, and get a voice shout out starting at the silver tier and some other cool perks too. Speaking of those silver tier supporters, I've got Raphael, Andrew Bowen, and Gerald Anderson. I am incredibly grateful for your support. Thank you. In this scene, you can see that I have it simply constructed with a floor and a bunch of walls inside of that floor where the floor has a nav mesh surface assigned and it collects objects children. If we click clear and bake, you'll see that it just avoids all these walls and the player can walk around anywhere where it's the floor. On my player, we've already attached the player input, which doesn't do anything yet, and a nav mesh agent with very default configurations, just the heights changes a little bit. Since we're using the new input system, I've already created an asset, but what you can do if you don't already have that created is right click, create input actions, and they'll generate one for you. And remember this only shows up if you've already changed your project to use the new input system and you've imported that new input system from the package manager. The name simple movement doesn't really matter. That's just what I've chosen for this. Some of the other names though are important. In here, I have only one action map called player. It's important that you also name yours player. That has a single action called move. Also important that you call this move and you create it to be the action type of value with the control type of vector two because we want to be able to move in vector two space that's forward backwards left and right and to get this movement set up you have to delete what they give you because they give you a button binding by default and add a new 2d vector composite instead that'll generate the up down left right here and then from there you can assign the w to up down to s left to a and d to right it's also really important that you assign it to be the keyboard and mouse control scheme otherwise it's not going to work if we open up visual studio we'll open up the player input class attach a require component type of nav mesh agent and we'll also put a private serialized input action asset called input actions that's going to be that asset we were just looking at we're also going to add a private input action map called player action map and a private input action called movement. It's okay if you don't know what these are, we're going to take a look at those in just a second. We'll add a serialized private camera called camera, a private nav mesh agent called agent, and a private float smoothing set to 0.25f by default that will attach a serialized field in a range of 0 to 0.99f, which is how we're going to smooth the input so that way we don't just abruptly turn to whatever the player's pressed. And we'll add a couple of private variables that we're going to use to help manage that smoothing. One, a vector three target direction, a float lerp time set to be zero, a vector three last direction, and a vector three movement vector. Whenever we're actually handling the input, we're going to take a closer look at what each of these is going to be for. So don't worry about that yet. On awake, we're going to assign agent with agent equals key component nav mesh agent. And then we're going to handle those inputs. So remember I said that naming the 
action map player was important because we're going to do input actions dot find action map player and assign that to be the player action map. Since for any given input action, you can have multiple action maps. This is the only one that we have assigned so far and we've called it player. If you called your something else, you'll need to change the string to be something, whatever you called it. That player action map then has some set of actions. Well, the only one we defined in this particular scenario is the move action. So we'll do movement equals player action map dot find action move. And if you call it something else, provide whatever name you put there in place of move. Now that we have the input action for when the player is going to move, we need to do something whenever that happens, right? So we're going to do movement dot started plus equals, and I'm going to follow the prompt to give me movement started, and then I'm going to rename it to be handle movement action. I'm then going to duplicate that line and assign movement dot canceled and movement dot performed to be the exact same thing. You might think that's a little bit weird, but once we define this, I think it's going to make a lot more sense. Started, canceled, and performed are events that are raised whenever the player has done something that triggers that action map or that action. So in this case, what we're going to do is have every action of the movement action started, canceled, and performed. All of those are going to do the exact same thing. But really fast, before we do that, what we need to do is enable all of these actions, action maps, and the input actions. So we're going to do movement.enable, player action map.enable, and input actions.enable. If we don't do this, then the input does not work because they are disabled by default. Finally, let's get into this handle movement action. I'm going to rename that default variable to be context instead of obj. And in here, we're going to do vector2 input equals context.read value, providing the type of vector2. And then we're going to assign the movement vector to be a new vector3, where we map the x to input.x, the y to be 0, and the z to be input.y. Since our game is oriented where x and z are a flat plane and y is up, that's why we have to remap this vector 2 to the vector 3 where we provide 0 for the y and map the y to be the z instead. Now let's move on to update. We're going to move our player every frame based on the current movement vector that we just read from the handle movement action. So the first thing we're going to do is normalize that vector to ensure that we have a vector of magnitude 1. If we don't do this, then the player, whenever they go diagonally, possibly could be moving faster than if they went straight in one direction. And then for the smoothing purposes, what we're going to do is check if movement vector does not equal the last direction, we're going to set the lerp time to be zero. And then we'll assign last direction to be the movement vector. And then since we just assigned that lerp time, you can probably guess, we're going to set the target direction to be vector 3 dot lerp, passing the target direction, the movement vector, and mathf.clamp01, which clamps whatever we're going to pass in here to be some of the value between 0 and 1. And we're going to pass in the lerp time, which possibly is 0, times 1 minus the smoothing. What that's going to do then is assign the target direction to be, by default, the target direction. And then every frame, we're going to get closer to the movement vector. We get there faster as we decrease the smoothing. We are then going to do agent.move in the target direction times the agent.speed times time.delta time. This is really the critical line of code that we need here because this moves the nav mesh agent in the target direction with the agent speed, and we're doing the time to delta time to make us move independent of the frame rate. What this does is moves our nav mesh agent on the nav mesh. So without using any physics colliders or rigid bodies, we can make sure that the agent will never move off from the nav mesh. We actually don't need any colliders in our scene whatsoever if we're using the render meshes to bake our nav mesh. But if we just move the agent, then they kind of look funny because they won't always be facing the right direction. So let's go ahead and make the agent look at the direction that they're trying to move. We're going to do vector3 look direction equals movement vector. And we'll check if the look direction is not equal to vector3 zero, then we're going to go ahead and rotate this transform. So we're going to do transform.rotation equals quaternion.lerp passing in the transform rotation and then doing quaternion.look rotation passing in the look direction because that's our target rotation. And then again, using the exact same thing we did on the movement movement lerping mathf.clamp01, passing the lerp time, and 1 minus the smoothing. And finally, at the end of this, we're going to do lerp time plus equals time.delta time. The very, very end of this, I'm going to do private void late update, and I'm going to assign the camera.transform.position to be the transform.position plus vector3 up, and I'm going to choose an arbitrary number times 10 just to make the camera follow this nav mesh agent on the nav mesh. One last thing that we need to do, because the smoothing right now, even if we said that 0, will take one full second for it to get fully up to speed and fully looking the direction that the agent 
agent's trying to go. Back at the top, we're going to add a private serialized float target lerp speed, and we'll set it to be one by default. And then everywhere we're doing the mathf.clamp01 with the lerp time, we're going to do lerp time times the target lerp speed. This will allow us to increase the speed in which we lerp towards this target by this factor. So if we set it to be one, it will not impact the calculation at all. And if we set it to be 100, it'll be almost instantaneous. If we hop back to the Unity editor, on the player input, I'm going to drag that simple movement to the input action asset and the camera to the camera. And I'm going to leave the smoothing at 0.25 and the target lerp speed at 1. I'll then click play. And you can see as I press W, A, S, D, my player starts looking in the direction of wherever they're going and they're moving in that direction. I'm not clicking whatsoever. It's all solely keyboard movement. You'll actually notice from our previous simple movement input actions, there's nothing to do with the mouse input and we never did any ray casting from the camera. I think the smoothing at 0.25 actually is pretty good. If we use zero smoothing, the player accelerates and looks at the direction they're going much more quickly, but there's still some smoothing applied. You'll see that's not an instantaneous look at that direction. That's intentional because it's very rare that you want something to instantaneously happen. If we up the target lerp speed to something like 100, then you get more of that effect with no smoothing applied at all. Feel free to play with these values to get the effect that you like best for your game. And remember that the smoothing affects both the acceleration of the agent and the rotation of that agent. These two are hooked together by the same values. If you want them to be controlled independently, you have to adjust those formulas that we used to use two different sets of variables instead of the same ones. With the drawbacks that we talked about at the very beginning where we can't take off mesh links or nav mesh links, at least I couldn't find a really good clean way to make that happen out of the box, and the obstacle avoidance not being considered, I found this to be a really awesome way to have player input working with our nav mesh agents using only the keyboard instead of the click to move. This is a really great alternative if you want to enable keyboard movement instead of click to move in your game. If you got value out of this video or the AI series in general, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. There's new videos posted every Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.